What's up everybody? I know it's been a while. I'm here bringing you a new video for the Bulletproof. I was away for a little while so I couldn't make a video while I was gone. But I decided to put two chapters in this one video so we can get this going along. So I'm going to just go straight into it. Um, we were up to chapter 6 and this is basically talking about working out less but still getting more muscle. Now, I know some of you are going to be like, what? Like, I thought I have to go to the gym six days a week. I had to eat a lot and all this stuff. But that's actually not true. It's basically what he says. If your goal is to be in a state of high performance where you feel good and have lots of free energy, spending your time on excessive non-productive exercises just uses up your willpower and burdens your body with extra stress. But it doesn't help you live longer or healthier. And goes into saying doing the right kinds of exercise is extremely beneficial, it grows your brain capacity by releasing proteins that interact with hormones called brain derived neurotrophic factors or BDBF. Um, increases insulin sensitivity and reduces cardiac risk and reduces stress. Well, we know that exercise reduces stress. <clears throat> now, the most common thing amongst most people, and especially people that are like training for like these marathons and stuff, is that they do a lot of overtraining and under recovering, which is a common problem for them. When exercise is done right, it can increase bone density, mood, blood lipids, increase your insulin sensitivity and lean muscle. Also, it decreases inflammation and helps you sleep better at night. But you got to make sure you work out at least two hours before bed. Now, this is a great definition for exercise by Doug McGuff. Basically, exercise is a specific activity that stimulates a positive physiological adaptation that serves to enhance fitness and health. It doesn't undermine the latter in the process of enhancing the former. Great quote there. And the most bulletproof form of exercise is weight training. Um, because it meets all requirements for proper exercise, increases your lean muscle mass, boosts your insulin sensitivity, excuse me, and metabol metabolic rate for days, and increases your testosterone growth. <coughs> so, um, let me see. So you can also biohack your way to get a strong heart and strong lungs. How do you do this? With a minimum amount of time, instead of jogging six days a week for an hour every morning, which takes up too much time, you could do this really fast by doing high intensity interval training. So all you have to do is basically run as fast as you can, like a tiger is chasing you for 30 seconds. You rest for 90 seconds. You do it again for 30 seconds. You do that for 15 minutes. It's like two times a week. It's like running six days, six days for an hour of jogging. So saves a lot of time there. <clears throat> now why why do this? A study found that doing intense workouts like this for at least 10 minutes caused the greatest secretion of the human growth hormone, AGH. Best time to exercise is around 1 or 2 p.m. and that's only if you wake up at 8 a.m., you have a breakfast, you have bulletproof coffee, and you work out later. So I would say, what's that? About a five, six hours after you wake up. So that's good. I mean, most of us aren't able to do that. So I guess the later, the better. Um, and then for lifting weights, he says you should work out one to three times a week. And each workout should not be no longer than 20 minutes, but has to be high intensity where you're hitting, you know, every core muscle and you, the muscles getting the, the, the full benefits of the workout. And the five most beneficial compound movements are seated row, the chest press, the lat pull down, overhead press, and leg press. Now, the proper recovery is very important if you want to build your body and that lean muscle. So I would say wait between two to ten days before your next workout. So, so between the fourth day and the seventh day, those are like the sweet spot. And then on those days that you work out, you eat extra bulletproof carbs, so your sweet potatoes, your white rice, everything like that, because this helps you recover faster. Now, for people that are non-athletes, people that don't work out at all, it's, you should start with at least lifting once a week, 
and sprinting the second week. So you don't do both in one week. You do one, you do four workouts in a month to get used to it for about three months, and then you start putting out two times a week. Because when you when you work out like that, your body will need much more sleep because it needs much it needs to repair all the muscles. So every twenty minute workout increases your sleep needs by more than three hours. Um, if you're exercising more than two times a week, take as much sleep as you need. If you're restricting sleep because you need to work on something like a project, you shouldn't do heavy workouts restricted to once a week. And also, if you're jet lagged from traveling, do not do it more than once a week. So basically, he says your body should be a recovery machine, not an exercise machine. The body builds more muscle during recovery. And if you listen to his podcast, he has a gentleman that talks a lot into this. And I forgot the name. I'll probably put it in the notes below so you can pay attention. Now I'm going to go to chapter 7, which is going to be quick. Because it talks about weak multivitamins and bulletproof guide to supplements. So micronutrient deficiency is the widespread epidemic of people today. Because we're consuming fewer nutrients than ever before. So the world is becoming overfed and undernourished. 48% of the U.S. population is deficient in magnesium, 40% is deficient in D12, and 10% is deficient in folate. So, micronutrient deficiency is basically the cause of almost every disease, common disease you know about. Um, so, because of that, your Labrador brain that we spoke about in earlier chapters won't rest when you lack key nutrients with its card because it's hard to determine when it's hidden vitamin deficiency. And most multivitamins are ineffective actually because they do more harm than good, providing an imbalance of nutri nutrients. Because man many of them are filled with fillers and additives that make the pills easy to produce, but hard for your body to absorb. So you gotta always get the highest quality version of the nutrients that your body can readily absorb than it is to make up for what's lacking in your body by taking a pill. Studies have shown that eating grass-fed meat boosts the plasma. Oh, sorry about that. Omega-3 levels far more than explained by the amount of omega-3s in meat. Antioxidants consumed from foods are usually beneficial, but taking mega doses of a synthetic antioxidant like isolated synthetic vitamin E increases your risk of death. But actually, adding fat to veggies or coffee helps you absorb their vitamins, helps your body to take it in, which is why I make bulletproof coffee, put butter in my coffee, and when I make my veggies, I definitely always add either the grass-fed butter or I add coconut oil on it. So if you want to look at the top 10 vitamins, you can go on bulletproofexec.com slash top 10. I'll put it in the notes below. And these are basically the most important ones. I'm just going to go through these really fast. So vitamin D, take in the morning. Um, <clears throat> necessary... It's necessary since, number one, we don't live near the equator. Number two, chances are you aren't a nudist, so you not a nudist walking around all day. So most of us think we get enough sun, but we really don't. So it's good to take it. Magnesium, you take this before bedtime. We just do not get enough of this. Not a lot of foods have it, and it'll make your body more resilient to stress. Vitamin K2. Take in the morning. Now people think they get a lot of vitamin K from leafy vegetables, but there's two kinds of vitamin Ks. One you do get from leafy vegetables and one from grass-fed animal products. Why? Because animals like cow and sheep convert K1, vitamin K1 into vitamin K2 in their stomachs. We can't do that effectively, so we have to eat the meat. Vitamin C, take in the morning and even. Don't do it after a workout because of the insulin sensitivity. It's good to take about one or two grams a day. But if you're sick or having a really hard day, you should take more than that because your body uses it like water during those times. Iodine, take it any time. You can also get it from foods like, like a wild caught seafood or iodine, iodized salt. Krill oil, take with meat, meals, 350 to 1000 mg's. Fish oil is a weaker version, so it's better to get krill oil because it's good for your brain, releases a lot of good hormones there. Vitamin A, take with your meals. Um, this selenium, 200 mcg a day, take any time. This helps prevent cancer and neurodegenerative 
diseases and protects against thyroid dysfunction. Copper, 1 mg a day, take any time, can get from sources like dark chocolate, beef or lamb liver. Vitamin B12 phylate, you can take it any time, you gotta make sure there's two specific kinds. Um, those are really hard to pronounce but I'll definitely put them in the notes below. And 800 mg's of folate, not the folic acid. And those are the basic supplements you should take individually, no multivitamins. Take them individually, which I, I'm going to start taking them. just haven't had time to go to the vitamin shop and just have them. And he has specific ones you should pick, like product brands and whatnot. So definitely will get those and let you guys know how it how I feel after since I'm still you know I wasn't bulletproof and when I was on vacation so I'm getting back into it now but expect the new videos to come out I'm gonna come out with them every day finish up the book for you guys um hope you enjoy see you in the next video take care